It was only a few times. Did I mention, you're the best provider? If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. The first story will test your boundaries. Would you, count it as cheating? Second story. As a teen grew out of her awkward phase, into a beautiful woman. She didn't grew out, of her ex cheating on her. This revenge act is served cold, literally. The last story, will grind your gears. It's featured as an experiment as I want to know, what your thoughts are. OP chose to ignore all the red flags, to his own detriment. He stayed loyal to the wrong person and learned it the hardest way. Tell the like button, his presence is more disappointing, than an unsalted pretzel. Warning, these cheating revenge stories might be upsetting to some audiences, especially cheaters. This happened years ago, I believe I was around 9 to 10. My mom was dating this personification, of a pure disappointment. We'll call him Jay. He was never the best to me and my little brother. He chose to treat us bad, and we had to endure it physically and emotionally. There were more things that happened behind the scenes, when my poor mother wasn't around. I can't name it specifically here. If you think of something horrible, you most probably guessed it right. Jay had a problem with watching inappropriate stuff on the internet, which led to numerous viruses on our computer. We shared one computer within the household. My brother and I tried our best to get rid of them, considering how young we were. But one day, we just came back home from school. Our mom picked us up and brought us home, and we decided to start some music, jump on the computer and play some Roblox, the early 2010s, but were rudely interrupted by a repulsive pop-up. My mom heard our reaction and marched over. She took control of the computer and looked through the search history. She found several sites, that would make most grown people blush. She got rid of the search history and cookies, and let us continue playing on the computer. I guess she was waiting for Jay to come home from work or the liquor store, to chew a piece off of him. We heard my mother screaming at him, saying she would pack up his stuff and send it off on a greyhound to his hometown, if she sees it one more time. Me, being a brave nine-year-old thought, why not give myself the best birthday present? And quickly plotted a devious plan. I would sneak onto the computer before school, and simply go onto the forbidden area of the web. Then closed the tab but left the search in history, and went on whistling on my way to school. I was eagerly waiting to get home. I couldn't concentrate at all, all I could think about, was that my mom would eventually use the computer, and the browser would, pop up, full screen. It went a bit different from my imagination. Because it was a half day at school, my mom would get off of work earlier to pick us up first. When we got home, it was like clockwork. Favorite music on, and hit the computer to play some Roblox. I checked the search history, and called my mom over. She saw the search, and her face, went red. She looked at us, and told us to help her pack Jay's stuff. A few hours later it was all packed up, and dropped off at the Greyhound station. It was sent to one of his relatives' place. We returned to the house and gave him his ticket, before we dropped him off at the Greyhound too. My mum was so happy. She never knew what happened until two years ago, when she was asking about a certain thing that happened during her and Jay's relationship. When I confessed, she looked at me and smiled. She thanked me, and we both ended that topic with, he's the hole, where the sun don't shine. Clarification from OP. Thank you for reaching out Royal. Everyone in the comments was calling my mother an idiot, I'd like to clarify that she wasn't. She sort of knew some of the stuff that was going on when she wasn't home, but it was compared to a small sliver of everything that was actually going on, until she left him. My little brother and I were finally able to tell her without fear of this man. I'm 18 now, so the entire thing took place 9 years ago. Also, I checked your channel out, you've managed to find some super good stories, I must admit. I hope you have a wonderful day. This story is told, from a female's perspective. My story takes place across a decade. When I was a teen girl, I got my first boyfriend, and his name was Roy. We were both in high school. Roy was popular and cute, so I was very happy to have him as my first boyfriend. We went to the high school dance together. I had my first kiss with him there. We were in the same school clubs, which meant we got to go on the same last school excursion, together. The location of the excursion was about an hour away, so it was a long bus ride. I sat with Roy in the back of the bus, where we were kissing like teens do. But he was pressuring me to do more than I was comfortable doing. 
He kept pushing, but I didn't want him to. I told him no, and he would stop for a few minutes, and then try again. I heard one of my best friends start to cry. She was sitting several rows in front of us. I was worried for her and wanted out of this uncomfortable situation, so I jumped at the chance to move seats, and go check on her. I comforted my friend for 15 to 20 minutes. I made sure she was feeling better, and then I was going to move back to sit with Roy. When I looked back at Roy's seat, he wasn't alone. Helen was sitting with him. But she wasn't only sitting. I saw his euphoric expression on his face and I saw Helen's head bobbing up and down, so I knew what was happening. Roy, the reason why the middle finger was created, didn't even care that I saw. Obviously, it broke the teen love fairy tale and I broke up with him. I didn't speak to him again for several months. We lived in a very small town, approximately 500 people, and like I said, we were in the same school and clubs, so I would see him around. He apologized to me several times. I did not forget what happened, but we got to where we could be in the same group, with our mutual friends, and I could stand to be around him again. Nonetheless, we moved on with our lives and it was fine. I ended up moving away from that small town a year later when I was older, flash forward over 10 years. I graduated from university, and still in my late 20s. I've always been a skinny girl with no curves, no figure, and had the awkward preteen look. I had clearly grown out of that. It sounds weird to say this about myself, but I will say that I blossomed into a beautiful young woman, with a nice figure I was proud of. I maintained beautiful long wavy hair, and learned what style rocked me best. So when I went to visit best friend Tara, in the same small town where we had grown up, I made sure I looked my best. When I was visiting Tara, her cousin, Jeremy, and his roommate also came over to visit. What a surprise, the roommate was Roy. Roy had not seen me, since I was a teen and still awkward looking. Now I was a size 2, and had double D's with long wavy hair. I was wearing jeans and a low cut shirt, so I know I looked my best. This bit might make you cringe a bit. But please understand, that I used to be the ugly duckling back then, and I want to emphasize this part. Because the look on Roy's face said the same thing. His eyes lit up like Christmas came early, and he said it was good to see me. Like I said, I had moved on from what happened all those years ago. But, I had not forgotten. Roy was flirting with me, and it was clear that he was interested. I told him I still thought he was cute, and I shamelessly flirted back. I would get close, and then I would move away. I would also whisper flirtatious words into his ear. Then I stood up and asked Tara, if we could have privacy in a bedroom. She uncomfortably said yes, looking at me confused as it to ask, why? Tara had been with me all those years ago, and knew what happened between me and Roy. Why would I give him a second chance? I gave her a, knowing look shared between best friends, and she knew. But Roy's face, looked like he could do the happy dance. I whispered to him to go into the bedroom, uncover fully, and wait for me. I was going to run to the restroom, and then meet him there. He sprinted to Tara's bedroom as I went to the restroom, touched up my makeup, and waited enough time so I knew he would be dressed down waiting for me. I opened the bedroom door, and Roy was lying there as expected. His unfolded clothes piled on the nightstand. I said some flirtatious things, as I slowly walked closer. I told him to close his eyes. He didn't want to. So I told him I would only approach if he closed his eyes, so he complied, at least for a few seconds. But a few seconds was all I needed. While walking towards the nightstand, I grabbed his clothes, and I bolted out of the room. I ran through the house to get outside and when I did, I just kept on running. It was snowing, it was freezing. But I was warm with adrenaline. So I threw some of his clothes somewhere in the snow, but when I was about to throw his pants, I could feel his wallet and car keys in them. So I took these separately, and threw them somewhere else in the snow. His wallet in the opposite direction, because I'm petty like that. But just when I threw his wallet, I could hear commotion coming from the living room, with Roy screaming in his birthday suit, from the door. What are you doing? I told him, this is for high school. This is payback, for your cheating with some troll, that was more important than our relationship. Maybe you'll think twice about being a cheating frick boy in the future. Then lastly, to give more power to my words, I swung his pants and threw them on the salty street. My best friend Tara and her cousin were standing there, watching us while laughing. Both Tara and Jeremy had been on the excursion that day over a decade ago, so they both knew how much it hurt me when, he did that. Neither Tara nor Jeremy helped Roy find his wallet or keys. While Roy was looking for his things, Tara and I locked her house and left Roy in the snow, while we went out to eat dinner. It was the best revenge I've ever gotten, 
and it all came spontaneously. For the ones who care about Roy, Jeremy stayed with Roy when we left him in the snow, so we knew he wouldn't be in any danger. Jeremy had his own car keys and turned the heater on in the car for them. I knew he would be physically fine. I'm petty, but not that cruel. Small side note, I absolutely did not think about doing any of this during the decade before being there. I just thought of it on the spot when I saw him walk through the door with Tara's cousin, and I could tell he was interested in me. I didn't think about him, or expect to see him ever again. He wasn't living rent-free in my head for over a decade. I want to know what happened to Helen. Do you have any information on that? She's still a woman of questionable morals and virtues. I definitely didn't keep in touch with her. I heard through the grapevine a few years ago, that she has four kids from four different guys. She still lives in that same small town and doesn't work. The following story, is added as an experiment. Let me know what you think in the end. Your opinion matters. My current life is nothing short, of a nightmare. Here is my story, my first real Reddit post. I'm a 35-year-old male, and my wife is 33 years old. We were high school sweethearts, married for 12 years and together for 15. We have three kids together, wonderful healthy kids. She grew up in an extreme Christian household, where sexuality wasn't a topic of discussion, but more of a taboo. You save yourself for marriage or your future husband, and figure out the rest later. So she did, her first time was on our wedding night. We had a healthy marriage, or so I thought at the time. Always made time to talk and listen to each other. I work away from home, so I'm gone every other week. We both have great jobs and are doing well financially. After we decided we were done having kids, and my wife's body changed so much for giving us our children. We talked about breast implants, and decided to go ahead with surgery. Very nice indeed, certainly helped my wife gain her confidence back about herself. I've always been into fitness and going to the gym, so we bought some workout equipment at home and she began to use them excitedly. She made great progress. So great, that she wanted to share that with others. At this point she talked to me about wanting to make an Instagram fitness page, to show her journey. I shared my concerns with that, and the negative attention that will bring. But as a husband normally does, I ultimately decided to support my wife's new hobby. A few months later, I get home on International Women's Day. I came home to my wife crying and telling me she needs to show me something serious. Someone had sent her a picture of herself. It was a bikini photo she had uploaded to Instagram, but someone had used an app to remove bikini. The sender told her it was found on a dirty site. They just wanted to let her know. This killed, me inside, seeing the pain it caused my wife. I suggested she removed her Instagram, since the initial picture was taken from there. But from that moment, the incident wasn't bad enough. Over the next few months, her posts changed from helping people and documenting her fitness journey, to showing her body off with less clothing. When August 2021 comes around, I start having my own health concerns. I had left testicle pain, that lasted for two months. After many doctor trips and having an ultrasound, I get cleared of cancer, which was a relief. In the meantime, my wife starts becoming emotionally distant and I'm trying to figure out why. One month later, I'm still struggling with my libido and drive big time. I get tested for low testosterone, and it comes back well below low normal average. Doctor tells me they need a second test, before starting on hormone replacement. The second test comes back shortly after at the low normal cutoff limits, and they tell me they can't proceed with treatment, and that I'm doing fine. But they recommend antidepressants, which I decline. That week, I get another blood test from a hormone replacement clinic, and book in for consultation in early January. Early December 2021 rolls around, and my wife loses her uncle and her grandmother, seven days apart. A major loss for the family. I come home from work early, and take extra time off work to support my wife, because she isn't doing well at all. It killed me inside, having to go back to work after two weeks, knowing my wife is still grieving such loss and needed my support. January 2022, I get approved for my hormone replacement therapy, and take my first shot of testosterone on the 13th, that month. Two weeks later, I'm already feeling like I haven't in a very long time. We go on a trip to Mexico for two weeks, and I'm having the time of my life with our children. My wife tells me that she can't believe the changes I've made, in literally three weeks, and, that I'm a 10 out of a 10 dad, and husband. A few weeks later I'm at work again, and I'm reading articles on emotionally distant spouses and midlife crisis. I send her the links, 
and she agrees that does sound like her, but she's not sure why. I then come across an article that read, the top 25 signs, your wife is having an affair. I'm reading this, and I'm blown away that my wife scores 22 out of the 25. I decide I'm going to confront her, but not until I'm home. D-Day arrives in March. We go out on a date night and I genuinely had a great time. I sit her down, and tell her I'm going to talk for 15 minutes and want her to listen, and she'll have plenty of time to reply afterwards. I read her the top 25 signs, and afterwards she says. Wow, I'm shocked. I can't believe you think some of those of me. I reply, by telling her this is the time to clear your soul, and whatever has been bothering you needs to come out. I was serious in my tone, as I thought about a specific shady incident, and that there was a drunken one night stand from the summer. The tears start to pour, and the long silence develops before she tells me, she has been having an online affair through Instagram. Within the previous mentioned months, she showed herself to another man who lives overseas. And he had a party of one with those pictures. I'm in disbelief that she could do this, but I think it's something we can reconcile over pretty quickly. I then tell her, that if there's anything else that needs to come out, she now has the opportunity. She only tells me, This, is going to kill us. And cries even harder now, followed by minutes of silence. I'm preparing for the worst. She breaks the silence, and tells me she is having an affair. She met him on Instagram, and it all started a week after her grandmother's funeral, and only a few days after I took extra time off work to be home. She made sure to add. It was only a few times, and it ended in January. As I come to find out, that only half-truths come out, and only as information, as to limit the damage and fallout effect of the affair. A few days of seriously talking all day and night, with no sleep, all the details start to come out. The truth, was that the affair was alive and very much active and sparkling, on the same night I confronted her. Thousands of text messages and averaging four hours of phone calls a day. They would meet in random parking lots, in the back of a truck, hotels, a fair partner's home, and the last time in my own home. You thought it was bad? No, it's getting way worse. The guy spent the night. While our three children were sleeping upstairs, while I'm away at work. She let him stay the night. Sleep in my bed, while my children were sleeping in the same house. She confessed to 11 confirmed times, in 2.5 months. But it could be as high as 15 to 20 times, as she can't remember all the dates. She would tell me she was headed to the gym, but in reality meeting him in a parking lot. She's on birth control, so they didn't use protection. I asked her to pack her stuff and move out, the kids had the worst week of their lives. Here we are today, both going to individual counseling and have a first MC scheduled for next week. She basically told me, she had written me off as we were going down the path of divorce. Which justified the cheating, but I think it can never be justified. Nonetheless, it changed when I made a miraculous turnaround, thanks to my hormone replacement. In her eyes, she got the man she actually wanted. And by still cheating on me, it drove the guilt and shame even harder. She says there's been no contact with her affair partner, since the 18th of March. She actually started her personal counseling, while she was in the middle of the affair. She's regretful, remorseful, and wants to do anything to make this work. You might think I'm weak and she uses me as, a doormat. But when it's really happening to you and you have children, it's much harder than perceived if you're on the outside. I'll just say it, I let her back in the house. Her living with me and the children, in trying to repair what is broken. She's been tested for STIs slash HIV, and pregnancy. She's reluctant to have sexy time, or even kiss me, and through open discussion, has admitted she is having a very hard time getting over the affair feelings and the withdrawal from it. The guy she was with is 33 years old. He has zero assets, can't hold a job down, and lives in an apartment with his mom. But she's still not over him? What about my needs? Obviously not wanting to be a doormat here. I'm not wanting this to work just for the children either. Questions, comments, concerns are all welcome. She brought into your house, and had sexy time in your bed. Even worse, while your children slept upstairs. There is no coming back from that. Imagine the level of disrespect. That's a big F you. No affair fog excuse can justify that. That's designed humiliation, probably laughing at you in your own house. No man, she's got to go. 
I think it is a common theme in cheating cases that show that it's not a thing of being weak-willed or having a lapse in judgment, but all about having a selfish personality. When the cheating partner is having a hard time, the loyal partner does his, her best to be there and help them recover. When the loyal partner is having any kind of problem, no matter how mild, they jump ship. You are there for her, as you should when those loses happened. When you are going through your testicular issue and low testosterone counts, she starts thinking, well, this is going to end in divorce, I should just start looking for something new, instead of trying to fix the relationship. She would rather throw 15 years and three kids together to the trash, rather than put in some work. However, your health issues manifested in your relationship causing problems. They didn't came out of nowhere, you both knew why it was happening, and you were getting treatment for it, and yet she didn't have your back. She was just looking after herself. Luckily, it wasn't cancer, but what if it had been? Or if you were to lose someone in your family, and get depressed for a while? Will she take time and make efforts to be with you, and help you be better? Or will she ditch you and seek to have her needs met by any random follower of her Insta page? She didn't just fail her promise to be faithful, but also being there in sickness and in health too. Want to bet what would happen if you tested the other ones? If you lost your job and couldn't get another one, would she uphold the for richer or for poorer one? This woman won't have your back when things go bad. Pretty much my thoughts there as well. Much has transpired since my last post. Looking back, I wish I took the advice of people on here who reached out, and genuinely cared. The hardest part is accepting the reality that all is lost. Unfortunately, I found out the hard way, by my own doing. Reconcile was attempted, after I let her back in the house, as I mentioned in previous post. So many red flags, as if it was a communist parade. She would give compliments to other men at the gym, right there in front of me. While withholding sexy time. That's not all, the list of red flags went on and on. After a period of trying, she pushes me away on purpose, saying this is too hard, and that she needs some time to figure her life out. I agreed. Not seeing each other would give us both some breathing room, and it could be healthy. She ends up renting an Airbnb, but was reluctant to give me the address of the place, but ultimately does. One morning I got curious and drove by the place. I see a truck parked a block away. I know this truck, I've seen it before as it's the truck her affair partner uses. Seriously? Shouldn't be a surprise at this point. I'm driving by, and I see her and the guy walking out of the alley towards his truck. I turn around, drive towards them and pull up door to door. He's inside the truck, she didn't have time to get inside, so she is ducking down behind the tailgate. Trying to hide from my sight. I rolled my window down and said. Real impressive, you lasted one day on your own. I pull to the back of the truck to get a better view, and she runs to the front and hides by the hood. So I left, and it all was clear to me. I made sure to take the necessary steps, like I should have done way earlier. I cancelled her cell phone that was on my plan and then just waited for her head to pop up. Two days later she did. She shows up at the house with her bags packed. She says in a defeating tone. I want to come home. I'm sick of living this shady lifestyle. I said that's a good decision, but you're not welcome to stay here, go stay at your stepdad's. She seemed understanding and left. Mother's Day rolls around, she wants to do something with the family, I disagree. She calls a few hours later, and invites me to a movie, for the kids. This time I agree. We had a great night as a family and when we get back home, I sent the kids to bed. She stays for a bit, but when I'm done for the night, I ask her to leave. She refuses, saying, No, i rather sleep. I'm just tired, I'll sleep on the couch. I go upstairs and see her old cell phone on the table. Don't judge me, but I decide to go through it. I found evidence in pictures and messages of the affair. Before this point, I hadn't actually seen it so blunt in my face. Whatever she told me was either changed in a way to make it seem less bad, or when I saw her with the guy, she would refuse to take ownership of what it really was. I'm tired of being the guy, she keeps walking over. I have the proof in my hand and walk towards her. I wake her up and confront her. She goes ballistic straight away. Long story short, police show up and she's arrested and charged with assault at 1am. Three weeks of no contact, and she's not allowed to visit the home. But after some time the charges were dropped. 
shortly after we meet up again, as she wants to meet. She wants to work on things, I'm hesitant, but she's a mess, and I take that as finally being remorseful. I rent my own place for five days and leave her at home with the kids. When I'm back, things seem to go a bit better, as communicating has improved drastically. But there's no intimacy at all, she won't even kiss me. And her phone still has a password I don't know about. We are in bed one morning, and at 6 am her phone rings. She looks at the phone and then looks at me, telling me it's the guy she had an affair with. Before I can say anything she adds. Yes, I had blocked him, but, I unblocked him again. I said I'm sick of this crap and threatened to leave, but she agrees to block him again and thinks she got me to stay. She didn't know, I already have my lawyer paperwork prepared for separation at this point. I know it's over, and I'm prepared. I have a fire in the backyard one night, she's at a neighbor's for a glass of wine. She comes back a few hours later and we talk. We dance a bit outside for the first time in years. I try to kiss her, she pulls away. I'm surprised and make a fool of myself later, when trying to initiate again shortly after. It felt so bad I had to sleep downstairs after. The next day, she forgets her phone again and I slide the screen down but can't get into it. Nonetheless, it shows the email notification, from the guy again. Another dagger to the back, I confront her again, she lies again, saying she didn't message him, he must have gotten her email somehow. I go downstairs, pull up her email and read the entire conversation. It says they've been going on for days behind my back. I show her, she breaks down crying. I said I'm filing for divorce the next day and leave. She calls me 15 times over the next hour. I don't answer and she texts me to come home, that she's having a breakdown. I return home hours later. She calls her affair partner while I'm there on the phone, and tells him it's over. He asks for my blessing to pursue a relationship with her, if we don't work out. I laugh, she hangs up. After some time, she made some changes, was very positive, reassuring me she is in this for the long haul and that it could take years to get to the place we want to be at. I quit my job on the road, and took a new position to be home every night with my family. When I start my new job, she pushes me away again. We go for a walk. She says it isn't working and doesn't think we can get there, but never directly says she wants to separate or divorce. We had a friend's wedding to attend that weekend, but I got my new work schedule and couldn't make it. She reaches out to her affair partner again, and spent the next three days with him after the wedding. I finally grew a spine and filed my paperwork. In August she was served, I listed our home and it was sold in one month including possession date. Separation agreement was signed the same week. I'm in a much better place over the last few months being free from this madness, which ultimately I created for myself. Trying to do everything possible to help this woman and save my family, but she isn't the same one I married 12 years ago, obviously and unfortunately all at my expense. Everyone said she would do it again, I didn't want to believe it, but deep down I knew it would happen. Kids are adjusting well to their new home with me, shared custody, and I focus my time and attention to them at all times. She's not with her affair partner anymore and he is apparently heartbroken. Recently I saw her and she told me. You're a great man, a great provider, husband, father, all the qualities I'm looking for. I know I won't find another man, with even 50% of what you have to offer. But I'm not attracted to you. But I haven't ruled out getting back together someday. Going forward, I can live with knowing I tried everything possible to work on our family unit. She did not and that's something she will carry to her grave. Stop talking to her about anything but the children. Seriously, just get away from her. She's toxic to your future happiness. Already done. I love how she just assumes she can always come back to you. She's completely delusional. She won't understand until you have fully moved on and start seeing someone else. Then it will hit her like a ton of bricks. How badly she messed up. Be prepared for when it happens. A whole new set of drama will take place. I know this is coming. The story isn't over. You need to make a copy of all the bad things she has done to you. Let it be the venom you need as motivation. From how much she has hurt you, while just focusing on her own fun. Write down all you sacrificed, and all the 100 chances to come back you gave her. To then be treated like a doormat and told you aren't good enough. Write it all down. Then cry a bunch. Then, whenever you get that stupid idea to get back with this woman, you read that list. 
you have never really seen what else is out there. You need to start dating ASAP, so there is another woman pushing your cheating ex-wife out, while filling up your heart. Don't fall in love with the first girl or two you date, but just stop wearing your ring and let your friends know you are single now. Have them set you up with some women first, because you have let this woman back too many times. It seems because you think she is the only one you can be intimate with, and you crave that like a drug. Get a new supply by realizing other women want you because as you said, you work out, earn well, and put your loved ones first. Other women will see this, and chase you down. This is also to battle your cheating ex-wife, telling you she isn't attracted to you. That is a huge blow to your self-confidence. I have a new girlfriend now. She treats me well, and I'm finally happy again. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate you. Show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. How did you experience the last story? Was it infuriating, like you were expecting? Let me know your thoughts, I'm really curious and will reply to you. That's a promise. I'll be seeing you, in the next one. Remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.